Greetings again, friends. Well, today I want to talk about the power of the cross. Now, I'm taking a little bit of a break from the prophecy series to reflect upon this week, which is the holiest week in Christianity. This week is the week where we recognize the passion of Jesus Christ and what he did to provide the way of salvation for all of us who would believe in his work on the cross. So friend, as we approach Easter, I want you to think about this and I want to share with you a blog that I wrote called The Divine Cross. So I will do that in just a moment. But before I do that, I wanted to share with you something that would help you in thinking about the cross. Now, I will address this as I go through this article, but I want to read a few verses in addition to what is said in this article and just reflect upon this idea and understanding of what the cross represents. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. So the power of the cross is what I want to focus on today, and after reading this article, that I had written back in 2011, I want to really focus on the message of what the cross represents. Now, there are quite a few verses that you can look at that focus on the cross. There are others that I want to just highlight as I think about this. We, as believers in Jesus Christ, and if you're not a believer, I hope you will pay attention and learn how you should be and could be, but I want you to understand that uh, the cross is the way that we are saved, and I hope that what I have written in this article will challenge you too about how God has done so many things to emphasize it. But the Apostle Paul said in Galatians 6.14, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been reconciled to me and I to the world. So it is through the cross that God makes reconciliation possible. And what Jesus did is he humbled himself as God in the flesh and became obedient to that cross. And Philippians 2.8 says as much, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. So the cross is something that is is just a part of Christianity. It is probably the symbol that recognize, that is most recognized to represent Christianity. And Colossians 1.20 emphasizes in that passage where it talks about the person of Jesus. You should go back and look at the video that I did, Jesus Christ, the one you must worship, and those four places that talk about who he is. Well, in Colossians 1, it talks about that. And in verse 20, it says, And by him, Jesus, to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Okay, so what he did for us is he bore our sins in submission to God on that cross. And Colossians 2, 14 says that. It says, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to his cross, to the cross. Um, we are confident 
that the cross is the message that you need to understand more. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says that we should be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, the pioneer and trailblazer of our faith, Uh, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I just want you to think about the cross. And I thought of the, the memory that I have tied to my personal tragedy that happened Uh, related to my ministering on the Virginia Tech campus in Blacksburg, Virginia. And uh, particularly, it hit me one day. It was actually on the fourth anniversary of the Virginia Tech tragedy, which happened on 4-16-07. And so it was it was on that day in 2011 that I revisited this chapel on the Virginia Tech campus. And this just had an impact on me because of what I saw in this war memorial chapel, which was supposed to be a place where people could go and connect with God, with the statues and things that were in it and the framed things around but yet there was one thing absent. So let me read this article that I have on my website, uh, www.vtlessons2learn.com. I still have over 230 articles that are there. And this one was written on 419 in 2011 called The Divine Cross. When visiting the Virginia Tech campus on the fourth anniversary of that horrific day that changed the lives of so many around the world, and set the atmosphere to allow for my ongoing personal tragedy, I was again struck with a glaring omission. Not only are officials in this community, that Blacksburg, Virginia community, continuing to ignore the reality that the 33rd life killed on 41607 was also a Virginia Tech student and member of the Hokie Nation, But many continue to deny a particular symbol that they even find offensive. This symbol is one that millions, if not billions, around the world will particularly remember this very week. This symbol is one even daily worn around the necks of thousands and even millions of people and one found in nearly every cemetery. It represents victory and forgiveness, as well as death and suffering. It is the symbol found represented in the black hole center of the incredible whirlpool galaxy. You can look that up online, the cross that is in the black hole uh, of the whirlpool galaxy. I believe it's M51 as well as through the cell adhesion molecule, laminin, that holds our bodies together. That is a protein molecule that is in every living thing that actually holds us together and doesn't make us fly apart, and it's in the shape of a cross. It is the cross made more common and even popular with many because of the divine cross. Despite the popularity of this important and influential symbol, the cross remains an offense to many people. When understood through its, his, through its historical usage, the cross is a horrific thing. Crucifixion was a torture perfected by the Romans and used as a means of signifying and even forcing submission to Rome. And there's much literature you could read about this. They they made criminals or people accused to be criminals to carry a cross that was representing that they had to be in submission to Rome, the power in the world at the time. And uh, when Jesus had to be crucified, he was representing not his submission to Rome, but his submission to God. 
And that's part of the message I want you to get. But crucifixion was a horrific thing. You could even look at the American Medical Association, detailed description of crucifixion that talks about exactly what Jesus would have gone through on the cross. Uh, that would be a good source to look at for it. But this torture of crucifixion, uh, the cross was that method of slowly killing the one hanging on it as they gasped for every breath in agony and suffering. Some people find this or any type of torture or shedding of blood offensive and seek to ignore or avoid any representation of or even talking about such a thing. It is interesting that the arts, along with many video games, television, and movies, often focus on various expressions of violence. Like it or not, violence is a harsh reality in this world and is regularly expressed as a negative aspect of human nature, particularly when any people are not held accountable and tempered by the rule of law and justice. The cross is just one of many symbols and expressions of violence. Yet the cross is even more offensive to people who do not accept the divine cross. This is offensive because it represents belief in and submission to the Creator God. Now, my blog talks about the divine cross, which was the cross of Jesus Christ, but I'm entitling this video The Power of the Cross because I want you to reflect on all that this represents, especially as we head to Good Friday, called Good Friday, because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross. Why do you think that the War Memorial Chapel at Virginia Tech, a place set apart for reflection and prayer, contains no sign of a cross anywhere in the building, not contained in or around the framed pictures along the walls, on the statues engraved at the front or even the platform, or anywhere around the altar. Why do you think that the 32 stones memorializing the victims... Incidentally, students spontaneously set out 33 stones in the immediate aftermath of 41607, contain no crosses, even for the many victims who clearly professed faith in Christ. The cross is offensive. It is primarily offensive to the academic world because it contradicts humanism. There is more to this than the historically ignorant position attempting to cleanse any institution of government from establishing a particular religion. The divine cross hits at the heart of the problem. People attempting to uplift man and trying to be accountable to only their own selves and not to the creator God who became a man and allowed himself to be sacrificed on that divine cross as the Savior from sin. Suffering is a difficult reality that we all must face. Disasters in nature happen all the time, just as so many recently have experienced through earthquakes and tsunamis around the world, or floods in various regions, and the many storms and tornadoes that have recently been raging around the United States. It did then in 2011 and every year and has this year too. Tragically, many were even killed from the recent devastating tornadoes in North Carolina, at least 22 there, and several other states. Why do you think there has been so much severe weather and natural disasters lately? What will it take to get our collective attention? Will it take more natural disasters? Perhaps it will take more economic hardship or even personal tragedy to get our attention. Maybe 9-11-01 wasn't enough. And those of us in the U.S., along with others in the world, will have to experience more terrorist attacks. Or it hadn't happened then, but what about this COVID-19 and how God has allowed it to be uh, in the world as somewhat of a judgment, but also a purifying effect to those people who are impacted by it to express whether they would 
uh, be afraid or whether they would have faith. I have I have done many, many videos about this. You can look at my response to the coronavirus playlist and see lots of those videos that reflect uh, how our approach to COVID-19 should be. But God is using this to get the attention of the world to get its act together and be prepared for Jesus Christ's return and get our lives in order as they should be. So all these things God uses to help us to understand uh, that we live in a fallen world and we are waiting for him to redeem this creation and the birth pains that are taking place as Romans talks about as well. Okay, I say here talking about this because the sovereign plan of the creator God has included the divine cross, disasters and death and suffering will remain a part of our life experiences until peace truly comes to the world. When tragic things increase, however, and whenever they individually happen, we should seek after the Creator God and consider whether our actions, or lack thereof, are a part of the reasons why devastating things are happening. Consider what it took for the proud and rebellious nation of Israel to turn and repent to follow God and His ways. Psalm 78.34 says, When He slew them... Then they sought him, and they returned and sought earnestly for God. It wasn't until he started letting them be killed before that got their attention, and they turned to God. And may we in the world turn to God because of what this COVID virus has done to take the lives of so many. Please think on these things and come to find victory and forgiveness through the divine cross. And friend, the reason why I'm doing this video today, because it is that divine cross and it is the power of the cross that represents what you and I need to understand and realize, and that it is representing submission, something that we all have to have as a part of our lives. Submission to God. You will submit yourself to something. You will submit yourself to another person, to family members, to your spouse. You will submit yourself to a government official. You'll submit yourself to the devil or to God. And I'm telling you, friend, that the only person that you should and can really submit to is the Creator God. And we are even told that Peter tells us that we are supposed to, and James talks about it too, but we're supposed to submit ourselves to God and resist the devil and he'll flee from us and to draw nigh to God because when we do, he'll draw nigh to us. He wants to have a relationship with us. He submitted himself. God Almighty, the great I Am, submitted himself to the limitations of human life. And he gave his life in submission to God to pay the penalty of our sin on that cross. So friend, understand the power of the cross in your life that you must submit to God because you will submit to someone, yourself even, or anyone else. But you will fail if you submit to yourself. You will fail if you submit to other people. You will fail if you submit to any organization or government unless you submit to the Creator God in the person of Jesus Christ. He modeled it for us, and we must submit to Him. So friend, I hope this has challenged you. I hope as we head toward this holiest time where we remember what Jesus Christ specifically did, especially on that day when He was nailed to that cross, understand that He did that because of His great love for us. He did that because even as Romans 5, 8 says, while we were still sinners, God demonstrated his love to us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So he gave his life for you, friend. What must you do because of what the creator has done for you? 
So like this video, share it with your friends, share it with other people about how they can understand the power of the cross, not just to wear it as a symbol, not just to talk about the cross, but to understand the message of it, that it represents submission to a holy creator, God. And hit the notification bell so you'll be ready for the next one. I have another good one as we head toward Easter in a poem that I wrote. So subscribe to this channel and be ready for that next video. Thank you for watching and understanding more about the power of the cross.